Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at the experiment for Gay-Lussac's law, also known as the pressure temperature law. So let's get started. Now just like we did for the experiment on Boyle's law, we're going to look at the steps of a scientific report that you could write if you'd carried out this experiment on Gay-Lussac's law. So the aim to begin with is to find the relationship between pressure and temperature for a fixed mass of gas at constant volume. So remember for Boyle's law we looked at the relationship between pressure and volume and we kept the temperature constant. Whereas this time we're looking at the relationship between pressure and temperature and we're keeping volume constant. But we're also looking at a fixed mass of gas for this case as well, where remember fixed mass of gas just means if you imagine the gas has a certain number of particles and that stays the same. Next we have the method and again just like we saw for Boyle's law, this experiment could be done in more than one way with slightly different equipment. So looking at what I've got here, it says to collect a pressure sensor, jolly bulb, tripod, beaker, Bunsen burner, clamp stand, heat proof mat and thermometer and then set up the equipment as shown below. So I'm going to show you what some of these things are. So here we've got a clamp stand which is holding our jolly bulb in the beaker, which is this glass bulb full of gas, i.e. air. We've got a thermometer in the beaker, and we've also got a tripod which is sitting on a heat proof mat with a Bunsen burner underneath it. We've then got a pressure sensor just like the one we saw in Boyle's Law, which has a screen giving us the pressure reading in kilopascals, but this time there's no syringe attached to the pressure sensor, but we do have a cable connecting the pressure sensor to the jolly bulb, i.e. it's connected to the gas, the air inside the jolly bulb. So remember the volume of the gas in the jolly bulb should stay the same, we're not changing that. So here's the important part that you need to be able to describe in an exam. So firstly you would fill up the beaker with water and heat this using the Bunsen burner. The temperature of the gas in the jolly bulb will increase as expected. So you would fill up this beaker of water near to the top and you would turn on the Bunsen to a blue flame in order to heat up your water. What you would then do is record readings of pressure from the screen on the pressure sensor over here at different temperature values from the thermometer. So let's say for every 5 degree increase in the temperature on the thermometer, you wrote down the pressure from the screen. Or in simpler terms, you're changing the temperature of the gas inside the jolly bulb by changing the temperature of the water surrounding it, and then you're measuring and recording the pressure reading from the pressure sensor. So in practice it would be very difficult to measure the temperature of the gas inside the jolly bulb directly, so we can measure this temperature indirectly by getting the temperature of the surrounding water. It then says to note that the jolly bulb should be completely submerged in water to ensure that the gas inside the bulb is heated evenly throughout. And this is the answer to a common question that you could be asked in an exam, which is why does the jolly bulb need to be completely submerged in the water? So it's to ensure that the gas inside the bulb is heated evenly throughout, so that there's even heat distribution. So if you imagine filling the beaker to cover only about half of the jolly bulb, then that means only half of the gas in the jolly bulb is going to be heated. So in order to get even heat distribution throughout the whole jolly bulb, you need to cover the entire jolly bulb. And the best way to do that is just by filling up the beaker to near the top. I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise how you would do this experiment. So here you can see we've got gas inside a container and we've got a pressure gauge and a thermometer, i.e. a temperature scale. So if we were to increase the temperature of our gas from 20 to 30, say, you can see that our pressure increases. If we go from 30 to 40, you see the pressure keeps increasing and so on. So you could increase your temperature, say, in steps of 10 degrees Celsius and you could note down the pressure reading on the pressure gauge. So you can clearly see that as I keep increasing the temperature here, the pressure increases as well. During the experiment, you could record your values of pressure and temperature in a table as shown here. So you've got temperature in degrees Celsius and pressure in times 10 to the 5 pascals and these are just some sample results that I got when doing the experiment. So at first glance you can see that as temperature goes up, the pressure also goes up. But a better way to see that is to plot this on a graph. So plotting a scatter graph of pressure on the y-axis against temperature on the x-axis as shown below gives us this shape here. So we have pressure in times 10 to the 5 pascals on the y-axis and temperature in degrees Celsius on the x-axis. However, you'll notice that this gives us a linear relationship, but it's not exactly directly proportional because if we extended this line, it's not actually going through the origin. However, there's an important trick here we can do in order to obtain a graph that does have a straight line going through the origin, because that's going to be more useful for us. So now what we want to do is extrapolate, i.e. extend, the line to cut the x-axis and add in the Kelvin temperature scale as shown below. So there's our initial line of best fit, but if we extend this or extrapolate it backwards until it hits the x-axis, then you'll see that it's cutting through at about minus 273 degrees Celsius. However, you should know from the theory video on the Kelvin temperature scale 
that minus 273 degrees Celsius is equal to zero Kelvin. So that's the same as zero Kelvin. So this means that if I now insert my temperature scale in terms of Kelvin below the one for degrees Celsius, you can see now that I have a straight line that passes through the origin if I consider the temperature to be in Kelvin rather than degrees Celsius. And this gives us an important result. So it says here that from the first graph, we can see that pressure against temperature in degrees Celsius is a straight line but it does not pass through the origin. So that was this one here. So it was a straight line that was far away from the origin. When adding in the Kelvin temperature scale and extending the line towards the x-axis, we get a graph of pressure against temperature in Kelvin rather than degrees Celsius. From this, we can find the temperature at which the pressure is zero pascals. This is minus 273 degrees Celsius, i.e. absolute zero. So from the second graph, we can see that pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So if we look here, you can see that because we've got this straight line going through the origin, and we've got pressure and temperature in Kelvin as our two variables, then this tells us that as temperature in Kelvin goes up, pressure also goes up, or as temperature in Kelvin goes down, pressure also goes down, i.e. the same thing happens to both variables at the same rate. They are said to be directly proportional to each other. But to conclude, we can say that for a fixed mass of gas at constant volume, pressure is directly proportional to temperature when it's in Kelvin, not in degrees Celsius. And this is called gay lussacs law, i.e. the pressure temperature law. So remember, all this means is that as temperature goes up, pressure goes up, or as temperature goes down, pressure goes down as well. But this only works when temperature is in Kelvin. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.